YouTubers, do-it-yourselfer, oil changers. What's up? Today I'm going to show you how to do a oil change on a 2009 Honda Fit. Uh, mine's a stick shift. It doesn't matter if yours is a stick shift or not. Um, oil, oil is oil. I'm just showing you mine's a stick. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll show you what you need as far as tools and the basic steps on what to do to change your oil. Okay, you'll need a 5W20. You'll need a filter. A Fram is a, that number right there, as you can see. I usually use a Wix because uh, they're better filters. Today I'm using a Fram. And uh, per the book, the book will tell you right there how much oil you'll need. 3.8 US quarts. And then if you're using the same manual I am, go to page 249 later. And uh, you can see, you can even replay this yourself. It'll tell you how to reset that uh, oil life percentage. Some real basic steps. You can even read it yourself there. It's very basic how to reset the uh, oil life. You don't need to take it to a mechanic. It's just one, two, three, four, and you're done. Okay, so now you know how much oil, how to reset your percentage switch afterwards. Take a, first thing you do is you're gonna take your, um, your cap off just so the oil will flow through freely once you take the drain plug off from underneath, okay? Uh, because the car sits so low to the ground, I always jack up my car. And I'm gonna tell you right now, never jack up your car without using a jack stand. Okay, there's plenty of videos out there how to jack up a car. I'll show you right now where the jacking points are on a Honda Fit. You can see it's right behind the front wheel. Wherever you want to jack it is fine. I use behind the front driver wheel. You can see that little metal spot right there. That's the sturdy part of it. Mine's a little three-tonner. Then you put a jack stand right underneath the frame there because this car's so low. Um, I don't even want to talk about what would happen if this jack went out when you're underneath there. Okay, safety, safety. Always use a jack stand. All right, so the car is jacked up. I've told you what type of oil, how much oil. Now we're gonna go underneath. I forgot to tell you what you're gonna need is a, uh, <clears throat> you're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Okay, I'm using a half inch drive today because it makes it a little easier. And I've already taken the drain plug out for you, but I'm gonna, because I wanted to show you something here. Whenever you replace a, Whenever you take your drain plug off, it always comes with a filter. I mean a filter, excuse me, a washer. And I'm reusing that steel washer you can see right there. Okay, uh, normally I use a, a crush washer. Today I'm gonna reuse my steel one. Uh, I'm sorry, aluminum one, which is fine. But you really should always replace your crush washer. Okay, don't ever, I do not recommend putting this in. Without using a washer, you can over tighten it, you can strip out the threads on the inside, and you're also setting yourself up for a leak. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go underneath. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm showing you where the drain plug goes. For this video, I've already drained the oil, but here's the oil and the washer I was showing you before. Okay, so we're just underneath the front of the car. Okay, we're underneath the front of the car. Basically between the two wheels, almost in between the two wheels, is the oil pan. And you can see I'm dripping a little bit of oil right there because I've got the, let me get that light right for you. Right there, that's where the drain plug goes, right there. Okay, mine's already drained out. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back in. That's the 17 millimeter socket is gonna come into play there. Have plenty of rags around because you don't want to make a mess on your floor. All right, so again, I've already drained the oil. I just put the plug back in. And if I forgot to mention, you need a catch pan for the oil. That's mine. Just scoot this out of the way so you can tighten it up. Obviously tighten it up by hand first. Put the ratchet on there. Okay, see it's got the washer on it, as you can see. Okay, that is gonna pre prevent you from over-tightening. Right, so 
yes, you should torque it to whatever's uh, recommended. Um, if you're going to do this without torquing it, which I don't have a torque wrench today, with that washer in there, what it does is snug it up as I'm doing. As you can hear me, snug, ratchet a little bit, and give it another little tug. Okay, okay, not too tight, but tight. All right, next thing we got here is the oil filter. I'm repositioning the catch pan. Set this underneath. There's the oil filter. So this is towards the front of the car. Here's the oil filter right here. That XG30, whatever number that was that I showed you over there. Okay, I've already loosened mine. I've done this enough times to know that mine was really good and hand tightened. So I could undo it with my own hand, which is what I recommend for you. Give it a good tightening of your hand. Okay, so I've already loosened mine. I'm gonna take it off. This will leak a lot of oil right here. So have your oil pan ready to catch the oil. Okay, I already loosened mine. Some will come out again. As you can see, it's starting to drip right into the oil pan, no problem. So you spin this off, right like that. And then turn it upright when you get it off right away because some more oil will come out. Okay, so boom. Now more oil will come out where the oil filter connects. Turn it upside down inside your little oil pan there. Let the oil catch. Okay, then you're gonna take your new oil filter. And I've made this mistake, so I'm gonna share it with you guys. What I'm gonna share with you is, whenever you use your new oil filter, First, lube this little area here with a little bit of oil so that it goes on nice and smooth. And having said that, what I recommend is when you take, this is the secret I was gonna, not a secret, it's just a mistake I made. See this old oil filter here? See how the, oh, the black O-ring is still on the oil filter? That's good, but you want it to be that way. You do not want that oil ring O-ring to have stayed on to the engine Sometimes they'll get stuck and stay onto this part right here, okay? Which means when you put your new filter back on, it's going to have an extra gap, which means the minute you pressurize it, it will leak, okay? Just a quick tip there. All right, so now we take the new one. I just put a little bit of oil, no big deal, on my finger, and I lube up this new one so that it goes on nice and smooth and doesn't get caught while you're tight, tightening it up. Okay, just put it back up here. Righty tighty, so you're going to your right. And as I mentioned to you before, as many times as I've done this, I don't use an oil wrench, oil filter wrench on that. I get it snug. You'll know when it actually starts hitting the, the engine wall there so it's starting to hit right now so i tighten and then i give it another quarter turn with my hand maybe another little bit boom okay that's it all right rags wipe up all your mess there from when it dripped double check we tightened the the drain plug we tightened the filter now we will Move up top. Okay, so here we are up top. As I showed you before, we removed that filler cap and um, I use a funnel here in the beginning because the, the can is a little bit awkward getting underneath this area here to fill it. Um, note that inside there, you can see that. There's a little bit of perforated screen there, which is good so that you don't ever pour any uh, little metal coverings from the oil can or anything in there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is use the, the funnel here to fill this 3.8 quarts there. All right? So basically what I did was I just uh, 
got the filler cap, I mean the funnel there, just enough so they can pour a little bit of oil through there like that. And you go slow because it's, it's sitting right at the top of the screen there. So of course the question is how, how do you know when you get to 3.8 quarts, which is just under four? As you can see on the side of the can here, the plastic bottle, it's showing you liters on this side, quarts on this side. So what it's saying is when you're down to here, you have one quart left in the bottle. When you're down to here, you have two quarts left in the bottle. Okay, this holds five quarts. Okay, so if you're gonna subtract 3.8 from five quarts, then you wanna leave 1.2 quarts in this jug. See, I'm at about two and a half right now, so I need to bring it down to right about somewhere around here so that I know that I did about 1.2 quarts. I got a little bit more to fill. Okay, so I just got done filling it, and as I was explaining to you, if you can see here, the oil is right about here in the jug, which means there's about a quart and a half left in here, which I'm gonna start my car up and then check the oil with the dipstick. Right now, there's, so there's one, two, three, plus another half inside the car, okay? All right? Okay, so now that you've filled it up, take the filler funnel out carefully. I put a rag right underneath it because it will drip, and make a mess inside there, but I catch it with a rag and just set it down somewhere. All right, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the top back on, the oil cap right there, put that on, okay? And um, as I was telling you with the dipstick, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you will lower your car back down, all right? So you take the jack stand back out. Jack stand comes out. Okay, one of the things I forgot to tell you was when you're jacking up your car, please always chalk the wheel, which is what I did. Put a piece of wood, a rock, or something there. And the reason why I'm showing you that now is because I'm gonna be removing that since I'm gonna be pulling the, lowering the jack. So, take the chalk out. My bad for not showing you earlier. I already took the jack stand out as you see. Now we're gonna just slowly lower the car right here. I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise real slowly. Okay, car has been lowered. Okay, so what's gonna happen now is, since I know it doesn't have exactly the amount of oil it should have, what I will do is I'll start the car, I'll pressurize it, make sure there's no leaks, and then you come here You'll check the uh, oil on the dipstick. Okay, what I mean by that is you're gonna pull this out. Okay, I had just pulled it out a second ago and cleaned it. So once you pressurize the car, you put this in when the car is not running. So you turn your car on, shut it down, and then you come over and you pull this dipstick out. Okay, pull this out, and now you wanna see where the oil is. Sometimes it's hard to show because it's so clean, but if you can see right there, that's where the oil is, and you can see there's two little holes. You want the oil to be up to the second hole, and then you'll know it's full. And as I told you, I wasn't fully full, so what I'll do is I'll add a little bit more oil, and it'll get up to that second hole, and we will be done. Remember, when you check your oil, the engine should not be running. Turn it off, check it, and pull the dipstick out, wipe it clean with a rag, and then put it back in and check it, okay? So, you all know how to change oil in a 2009 fit. Need oil, a filter, always jack up your car without with uh, jack stands, and I uh, hope I was able to help you out, okay? Good luck, have fun.